Grace and peace to you from God, our Creator, Jesus, our Redeemer, and the Holy Spirit who sustains us. Amen. As we've been saying, today is All Saints Sunday, the day where we honor those saints who have gone before us. We celebrate the saints in our midst, and we consider that we are all, both sinner and saints, 100% each of those. It's a day of looking at the cycle of life and the connectedness of all things. A day where we read the names of those who have died in the past year and those who have been baptized as well. And we share communion with all the saints of every time and place. It's a day of highlighting the cycle of life and the death and resurrection happening all around us all the time. We have this new pyramid today to remind us of that, that cycle. The leaves on this pyramid are all different colors for the seasons of our lives. The luscious green leaves at the top of the pyramid represent spring and summer and new life. And these leaves die off in the fall, which is the season we're in now. And at the bottom, you can see there are some brown and orange leaves there. But they have to die to make room for new life again in the spring. All Saints Day is a day of deep meaning and truth, truth telling about this cycle of life. And, the, and the, that both, we, are, we can be in the hope of it and we can be in the mourning of it at the same time. For me personally, All Saints Day gained extra meaning this year, and I know it did for some of you all as well. But my grandfather died uh, this past Monday on All Saints Day after being in hospice for months. He was a man of few words, and he was known by all as a very hard worker. He taught me how to fish how to gather and shell pecans, how to garden and shuck corn, and he'd let me ride on the tractor with him. Uh, but my, by far one of my favorite memories with him is pictured here, that he would usher at his church, and anytime he was the usher and I would be visiting, he would lift me up to ring the church bell to start worship. I loved ringing the bell, and it quickly became a ritual that I always looked forward to with anticipation on our visits. It's also a ritual that instilled in me a love for the church and the traditions of the church. Over the past year and a half, I've been thinking a lot about rituals and patterns in the church and in our everyday lives. Some of the memories that we love most about those who have gone before us are often everyday things that became rituals of our relationship. Maybe we always baked cookies with that person, or had tea together, or went shopping, or built and created things together. Maybe we shared in the ritual of hiking, or maybe we shared in the ritual of going to church together, or watching football together, or playing cards together. Think about someone who you want to honor today, and the rituals that you shared. Rituals are what bring us together. They create habits of connection, and ultimately, they end up creating memories. Not all rituals are religious, but I cannot think of a single ritual that does not spark connection, either with the self, or with others, or with the divine. When someone dies, rituals are often how we cope. When a friend is mourning, we often write cards, or make phone calls, or cook meals for them. And when a family member dies, we share stories and flip through photos and watch home videos. We plan memorial services, write obituaries, there are visitations and memorial gifts and final resting places. We weep together. We hold one another and tell the story of how the person died of that day. These are all rituals to connect us and ground us in the midst of our grief. And I think one of the greatest losses of the pandemic, especially early on before vaccines, was the sudden halt and disruption of our rituals. Our holiday rituals were called into question and we had to reimagine the sacred rituals of family and friends. Not only that, but we could no longer share meals together, commune together in the worship space, play cards together, gather in person for funerals and baptisms, sip tea together. And on All Saints Sunday last year, we could no longer light candles together in the same space in real time. 
We made the most of it, as we always try to do, and the tech team pulled off one of their miracles, and we communed on the live stream in the columbarium last year with all the saints that have gone before us, and we lit candles there, and it was very special in its own way. But for those who have experienced loss, for those who need to be unbound by their community like Lazarus, the ritual of saying the names and lighting candles and hugging one another and being there for one another in person was greatly missed. And today we have that opportunity again. One of the many rituals we took for granted before, we can now share again. In our gospel lesson this morning, there are a lot of undertones about rituals too. We have a story about the ritual of people gathering together in their homes and mourning. We learn about pronouncing someone dead after three days, as Martha says, he's been gone for four days. This was a ritual of the first century. The ritual of Lazarus' body being wrapped and bound in cloth and surely anointed by oil too. The ritual of placing a stone in front of the cave to protect the body of the deceased. And of course we have a story about the ritual of weeping together in anger and frustration and sadness and grief. In this gospel story we often focus on Jesus in his divinity raising Lazarus from the dead. But today I want to point to how Jesus in his humanity takes part in the rituals. Of course, we can never separate the two, but we can hone in on this question that Jesus asks in the story. When Jesus arrives days late and long overdue after getting a mouthful from Mary, who is so disappointed and devastated, Jesus asks this, where have you laid him? Now this is a question coming from someone who is supposed to be all-knowing. Jesus as God made flesh, should know where Lazarus is resting. But the mourning people, they are gracious. And they say, Lord, come and see. I think Jesus does know. He knows where Lazarus is. But I think he's asking for two reasons. One, I think he has nothing else to say to his devastated friend who he has let down. And two, I think he wants to take part in the ritual. He wants to journey to the tomb with the rest of the family. He wants Mary to guide him along and show him the way and tell him the story about what happened that day and where everyone's at now. Jesus wants to participate in the ritual. He's already missed out on so much, and he needs to draw close in the ways that he knows how. He wants to connect again to this community he's disappointed Rituals bring people together. There's a reason that things become rituals. Because they work. They work to connect us to one another and to God. They work to evoke emotion and help us to dig deeper into where the Spirit is calling us in that moment. Yes, this is a story of resurrection this morning. And a Jesus whose power we constantly underestimate. But it's also a story of a God who meets us. Not in our power, but in our weakness, in our mourning, in our suffering, in our weeping. Jesus meets us in our rituals. Jesus meets us in our weeping this All Saints Sunday because he knows what it is like to weep. Jesus meets us in our storytelling, in our journeying to the tombs and graves of our loved ones. Jesus meets us in our humanity, in our shortcomings and insecurities. He even meets us in our anger and frustration at having lost loved ones in the first place. The original Greek in this story, when it says he is greatly disturbed, it's much more about anger, actually, than it is about sadness. So yes, Jesus wept, but it was probably more out of anger and frustration. He was frustrated. He knew that if he raised Lazarus, it would be the catalyst for his own death. He knew he had let his friends down. He knew the crowds were watching with a judgmental eye. He was moved with anger. But regardless of why Jesus is weeping, that's just it. He weeps. He cries. He feels what we feel when we are so overwhelmed with emotion and we just can't hold it in anymore. 
Jesus participates in our humanity. And Jesus raises Lazarus even though it will bring his own death on the cross. And because of that, Jesus brings life on both sides of the grave. He meets us in the here and now and wipes our tears away and calls us by name, calls us out of our bondage and into unbinding one another in community. Siblings in Christ, we have life. Out of death, there is still life. God is making all things new, both here and now and in the resurrection. And even still, it's okay to feel sad. It's okay to feel angry. It's okay to want more. And even still, trusting in the promise of the resurrection, we know Jesus is weeping with us and calling our name just as he called our loved ones home. We know these rituals won't bring them back, but they can help ground us in that promise. Amen.